My name's Linda, I'm a community agent and I work for Community Council for Somerset, which um, is also and better known as CCS, it's less of a mouthful. Um, I'm just going to do a little blurb on explaining who we are, hi Christy, uh, who we are, what we do, um, and then we'll go through um, a few case studies, we'll talk about mental health awareness which is this week good morning everybody so ccs is a leading local charity working in the heart of somerset's communities motivating and supporting people to take action giving them the information support and skills and resources to make change happen and shape their future with the confidence to know that they are not on their own with the, all of our ccs teams by their sides CCS have over 90 years experience working in the heart of Somerset communities. Um, I haven't worked for them that whole time, I would like to say. And with our CCS agents, we support people to be healthy and well, to manage their affairs, to stay independent and safe, and to be part of a strong and thriving community. Good morning, Tracy. Thank you for that. Hi, Tim Tamina. Um, I know Tracy did it yesterday and she had a few technical issues as well. So with each virtual talking cafe, we will iron out the issues. Um, I don't think my internet's great, so the pitch quality might not be great, but hopefully you can hear me well. So at the moment, we are doing a talking cafe, virtual talking cafe live because we cannot run them due to COVID-19. So we have done loads of work during this. And so far during this pandemic, we have supported over 42,000 people in Somerset and almost 4,000 just in the Taunton Dean area. So you can have a look at some of the work we have done during the COVID-19 lockdown. Um, we've got a video and I think it will be posted in the comments section in just a moment. So there's lots of us agents in Taunton Dean and around the whole of Somerset, but I am based in Taunton Dean, so I'm just going to briefly explain our roles. So myself and Carrie are also community agents, CCS community agents, and we take our referrals direct from adult social care and we offer support with funding for certain items, benefit support, um, accessing social activities, finding a micro providers, and um, other more complex needs. We also have a CCS carers, carers agent called Elaine, and she offers support and guidance to all you carers out there. And she can provide information on activities and support groups, and again, micro providers for carers that need that extra help. Then we move on. We have seven CCS primary care network village agents who are all linked to various GP surgeries across our area. And they take their referrals from either directly from the surgeries through the doctors or people can be referred by a family member or a neighbour um, and they can even refer themselves to the village agents. Um, and then finally, we have three home first agents. Then they're based at Musgrove and they support patients to make changes to their homes and home life and care packages in order that they can be discharged safely from hospital and be safe in their homes and very often alone. So um, they also were put in um, other, uh, uh, other problem solving issues so that they can remain social and do some activities as well. You can check to find who your local agent is in your area by going on to www.ccslovesomerset.org and then find a village agent, which um, I think the link should also be on um, the messages coming through shortly. So, um, Oh, and also I must mention our Good Neighbourhood Scheme, which the village agents are promoting in areas and communities um, around here. And now would be a good time for um, different communities or villages to start a Good Neighbour Scheme as you've got the volunteer network in place. Um, and we would help you set it, set it up 
and provide publicity for you and help with any problems you have. So if you're interested in uh, starting up a good neighbour scheme, then please contact us um, on our uh, email, by email or website and I'll send you the links uh, later. So moving on, let's talk about Talking Cafes. I'm just going to move my comments down because I can't, it's not keeping up with them all. Oh, hi Linda, so that's um, the Devon and Somerset Fire and Rescue Service community um, and they do a lot of um, home fire safety checks for us, brilliant. Um, and hi to Fiona in Wellington, good to see you from Wellington, that's part of our Taunton Dean area. Uh, Adrian's here from the Home Fire Safety in West Somerset. And then who else? Uh, right, so there's the link. We've got the link for the uh, CCS Somerset and Village Agent um, video that we did. Uh, morning. Hi, Nick. Hi, Day, Adrian. And there's how to find your Village Agent link and the CCS Love Somerset link as well. So that's brilliant. So, Talking Cafes. Talking Cafes are a drop in for anyone over 18 to attend. They're friendly and informal. Um, and a place for direct advice and resolutions. Here you'll meet your local agents um, and they will generally be the uh, primary care network village agents running them. But you can discuss anything from health concerns, from mental health issues as well, as well as the physical. You can discuss housing, financial difficulties, employment and support. And there's carers help there as well or simply to look after someone regularly and need advice, you can get it from there. The agents will triage people to the right places for support, which relieves pressure on the GP services and our crisis fund. And agents can help many more people in a drop-in environment like a talking cafe than they could if they had to go and visit everybody in their own homes. So it means we can help more people. Today, we've got 21 talking cafes um, different venues organised by CCS in Somerset and we have had, had over 4,331 people precisely that have attended them so far. We've also run special events like the Talking Cafe Christmas Express which was in West Somerset on the steam train which was a great success and the Summer Picnic. So to find your local Talking Cafe go to www.somersetagents.org Talking Cafes. So, talking cafes run over all of Somerset, but during this pandemic we've had to go live because obviously we have to do social distancing. So we are going to be going live at 11 o'clock from Monday to Friday with the relevant village agent from their area. So yesterday it was Tracy Bland from West Somerset, today it's myself covering Taunton Dean. Tomorrow is the Mendip team and it will be hosted by Kizzy Marshall. On Thursday, Sedgemore will be running the Talking Cafe and that would be with Lauren, the team lead. And on Friday, the team running the Talking Cafe will be South Somerset and I'm not quite sure who's running that one. We have a few like little things to talk talk about for the Talking Cafe Live. Um, so we want you to ask questions in the comments section during the live stream. Any questions not answered, well, we will follow them up afterwards um, and your local agent will contact you with that. Um, please, please don't put on any personal details, not any phone numbers or email addresses. Um, if you want to ask us something privately, you can put it in the message area, not in the public posts. Um, or you could click on the link in the comments uh, to our COVID support form and an agent will be in touch with you. So there are various um, methods of doing that. Um, and the link should be coming up in the comments any moment as we speak, I am sure. So this week, I don't know if you're aware, it's Mental Health Awareness Week. Uh, this year's theme is kindness, which celebrates all the amazing demonstrations of kindness we have seen in all of our communities um, during this pandemic. Um, we've had some amazing volunteer groups popping up all over Taunton Dean and I'm sure it's the same all over all areas in Somerset and without them uh, I don't know how we'd manage. They have been quite incredible 
um, helping out with shopping for people who are self-isolating and prescriptions. So a big thank you to all those coronavirus support groups out there in Taunton. The COVID crisis had a huge, huge effect on everyone's mental health. Um, it could be because you're stuck at home and you've got the children and you've got to deal with um, looking after them with their schooling and also working from home all at the same time, which can be very difficult. I'm lucky enough not to have any young children, so I'm not really interrupted until my grandson comes around. Um, so uh, not being able to see loved ones, that is very hard. And also a lot of people are having financial struggles, um, so which can make you um, affect your mental health, make you very down and a lot of worrying. So some good ideas. It's best to keep busy in these times. So some good ideas for keeping busy would be exercise. It sounds simple, but it really does help. So you could do some daily exercise. You could just go for a walk, go for a walk with your dog. You could do Joe Wicks. Uh, he seems to be very popular, seems a lovely man. I don't personally do it. Uh, I take my exercise through walking. Um, you could do yoga. I have tried it three times um, in the whole lockdown, so it's not too bad. Um, or there's things like the Sofa to 5K challenge, um, which younger people might enjoy, perhaps not so much me. Um, there's Zoom Skype meetings, which you can set up for your family to catch up with everyone, your friends. You can have uh, virtual dinner parties, uh, virtual drinks with friends. Um, you've just got to be creative and, and make the effort. And once you've done it, you'll feel so much better. And good old fashioned phone calls as well. Um, you know, let's bring back the phone lines and ring people up that maybe you haven't spoken to for a while and have catch up because there's nothing else to do. So let's do it. There's many support groups in Taunton Dean um, that offer friendly phone call services. We'll ring once a week, sometimes more, depending on um, their capacity and you know your needs. Um, the people who are offering this to elderly people, and they're the people that are really suffering from um, isolation. Uh, at Age UK, the Alzheimer's Society, um, helping people struggling with care, caring for someone with dementia. Um, Re-engage, Silver Line, and also NHS volunteers. They're all running a phone-in service, to name a few. So if you need the links for those, please. Uh, ask us, we can provide all of that for you. Um, right, I'm just reading a few of these comments. Yeah, what a difference these volunteer groups make. They do, don't they, Carolyn? Um, yeah, a bit of yoga, Lucy. I can imagine you're very good at it. I'm not. I can't even touch my toes. So there you go. So some other great ideas that I found um, are that are on Facebook, um, which presumably everyone's got because um, you're on it now just move that a little bit so there's the virtual village hall if you type it in in the search bar virtual virtual village hall they have loads of activities and live activities they have ballet they have zumba there's cooking um, lessons there's photography groups there's music there's all sorts so that's a great one and also somerset libraries uk so if you put in the search bar somerset libraries uk there's children and adult storytelling. There's cooking clubs, there's gardening activities. There's lots of things for you to do um, and join in with. So that's another really good one to do. Um, Somerset County Council have got um, Healthy Somerset page um, and hopefully we'll get the link up there for you as well. Um, oh, hi, Wendy. Oh, Wendy's doing Friday South Somerset Live Cafe. So that's great. Um, in Wellington, yeah, Fiona, they've got the Wellington Angels, which have been doing a great job and are very, very useful for us. OK, so um, Somerset County Council, SCC, Healthy Somerset page. Um, there's lots of great advice and fantastic links uh, to national and local resources available. And they cover a wide range of issues from help for people experience domestic abuse, which as we know, is uh, exasperated by this uh, lockdown um, and help with uh, bereavement services. So um, you can go on to their link, which is www.healthysomerset.co.uk forward slash every mind matters. But hopefully you will 
get that link in just a moment. The link for the virtual village hall is now on there as well, um, and which is great. So let's move on. Okay, so, oh, just come in, uh, this won't be happening in the Mental Health Awareness Week, but you could plan, plan it for it. But on Monday, Monday, May the 25th, which is a bank holiday, there is the Great British Camp Out. I don't know if you've heard about it. So you can camp in your garden, in a tent. You could camp in your lounge, in a den. You could camp in your caravan if it's sat in your drive, not getting used. Um, so it's like clap for NHS, but it's camp for NHS. And if you feel like making a donation, you can donate to justgiving.com. Um, and that could be fun. You could plan it, plan your camp out in your garden. So you could arrange that with your children. So some other useful links that you may find um, things to do. So in Somerset, for children and young people, there is um, www cypsomersethealth.org and you go onto the bulletins and it's got information and tips for activities for children and young people so if you're struggling for more ideas then have a look on that we've also there's also help with uh, dementia so there's practical advice for living with dementia during social distances which is obviously a very big problem and that is, uh, you go on to www.distancingwithdementia.org.uk. But if you do want me to repeat any of these links, please, please comment and we'll get them sent out to you. So just reading a few comments here. So Hazel has been painting with watercolours to try to relax and try something new. Wow, well done. Yeah, let's get Caroline, get the marshmallows in, ready for the camping. Um, yeah, providing you live in a safe area for your for your campfire. Um, yeah, I think it would be great fun to, to do that. Um, so what else have we got? We have got some links for uh, domestic abuse support in Somerset, which sadly is uh, relevant at the moment. And they offer refuge, safe houses, outreach and helpline support. Um, so there's a range of local and national agencies that can be found if you go online to www.somersetsurvivors.org.uk um, and they would be able to um, give you some advice. Uh, the Police Lighthouse Victim Care website um, also has a list of local services and um, I'll give you that. It's www.lighthousevictimcare.org forward slash support services and hopefully the link will also be up coming up for that very shortly thank you lucy she has uh, posted the dementiauk.org link which is great um and also distances with dementia okay moving on um let's see there's uh oh yes the center for sustainable energy they are offering some fuel top-ups for your gas and electric if you have a prepayment meter, which I know a lot of people have been using more electricity. Um, they've got children at home. They're running more uh, laptops and iPads and, and the ovens are more because they might be making baking more. So um, there is help with that. So if you do need help with your prepayment meter, to, uh, a little top-up, payment for you, you can call 0800 0822 or you can call Lucy on 074 985 75847 and um, we will send you out these numbers again in the comments. So that's the Centre for Sustainable Energy. Okay, uh, also, what else we got? Oh, yes, yeah, we've got some free adult education if you want to uh, better yourself, educate yourself while you're stuck at home. Uh, you might be furloughed, and it's a perfect time to improve your employment prospects for the future and to, to increase your brain capacity. So you could go on for so these free adult education and training courses, and they are free. Uh, you go to www 
learn yay so it's learn y a y dot co dot uk so that would be very useful i might have a look myself see what courses are on offer so if anyone's got any questions now's a really great time to to come up with them um, it's great to see everybody joining in uh, the talking cafe Talking Cafe have posted the number for the Centre for Sustainable Energy. Um, that's great. Thank you, Hannah. Um, so I've got, uh, as it's Mental Health Awareness Week, I've got a mental health um, case study here that um, we can talk about. Um, so it's for a person who had mental health problems and they're finding lockdown and social distancing is very hard to understand. I mean, it's bad enough for all of us, let alone if you are trying to cope with this as well as having mental health problems. They had no heating, no food, no money. So somebody obviously raised the alarm and we got involved. Um, this person was feeling very confused, didn't understand the social distancing and was feeling very lonely. So um, one of our agents managed to get a crisis grant for this person. With that, they bought a radiator because it wasn't quite so warm at the beginning of lockdown. So they got them a radiator. They arranged food boxes from the food bank and other places so that they didn't go hungry. And they arranged for a local volunteer group to support this person with regular phone calls, um, as we've talked about, make such a difference, and with some shopping for them. Um, and a referral was made to the adult social care mental health team uh, who have now allocated a worker to support them, which is all good. So long term, the agent will also support them back into volunteering. So getting them out into the community. And this is what we like to see. We like long term solutions, not just short term fixes, but we look at the long term to help people help themselves. So that is a great, great example of a brilliant piece of work by one of our agents um i think that's all uh ah oh, we've got a message from chrissy one of our pcn village agents and she's saying there's some free sign language courses on youtube which would be a great skill to learn where some groups are offering discounts and it's great to learn at home while you've got the time i once did a sign language course but I only know they're very, very basic, so we won't even start there. <laughs> so, um, any other questions? I've got some more case studies, if you would like to hear them. Um, we've got some great ones here. So I've got a case study where one of our PCM village agents supported a young family. They needed nappies and baby milk and a temporary food supply, a temporary food box, so they could continue to isolate. Now it's very difficult to isolate when you've got young family, a young family you need to shop for, and trying to keep them occupied and indoors is very hard as well. So, and a lot of people facing financial hardships because of uh, being furloughed, losing their jobs, um, and the benefits system, although it's there, it's taken a long time to kick in, so some people really feel in the pinch there. So we managed to fund fund for some nappies and baby milk and food through a grant and we found a longer term solution for them um, linking them up with their local church for support and for shopping support as well so th that was great um, so Lucy from the Centre of Sustainable Energy has um, messaging she said she can help you get your bills down by switching suppliers or helping you with energy saving measures as well the top-ups are for prepayment meters are for emergencies for those who run out of credit and have not got um, and have not got the money available at the moment. But they, they do other things as well, switching supplies, finding the best tariff for you. So that's really good. Um, apparently, we have an amazing singer uh, in our volunteer, Caroline Ellis. I wasn't aware of that, so we would like a little post, maybe Lucy, if you've got a post of Caroline singing, that would be great. <laughs> That's brilliant. So again, uh, there's the link to find, our, uh, find your local village agent. Okay, so let's go back to more live 
uh, case studies then, if there's no other questions. So, um, we had a client, an elderly client who was fragile and losing weight, um, and they were going through chemo and radiotherapy. Um, so it's very important for them to be self-isolating, self-distancing. Um, one of our agents has been doing shopping for this person for over five weeks um, because the volunteers obviously didn't want to get too involved because they were worried about um, bringing COVID or, or any other illnesses into this person's life. So one of our agents is doing it and um, they've got the PPE equipment to do this, although they're not going into their home, but they're doing the shopping for them. Um, he's got no internet um, and he's using a CCS grant um, to get the shopping. Um, she's now supporting him to be independent, which is what we do aim to do, teach people to uh, take control of their own lives. Um, and she's shown him how to use a mobile and how to do his shopping through the mobile um, to Morrison's, who have done a great scheme where you can ring up, you just actually call them, it's not online shopping, you ring up and you place your order of shopping. Um, it's quite a basic list that you can use, but if there's something specific that you'd like, you can ask them for that as well. So um, hopefully someone will put up the phone number for the Morrison's shopping line. Um, so that's great. And um, so, yeah, this client was able or is able very soon to be independent and do their own shopping, which is what we like to see. So um, have we got any other links? I wonder if Lucy would be able to put the link up for the Morrison's shopping list. I know she's used it very successfully. So uh, moving on, another patient. A uh, case study about a patient who's been discharged at home but their spouse was still in hospital seriously ill and this person was elderly and had never really lived alone didn't have any skills in running a house paying bills or anything like that um, oh, I can see Lucy has Lucy has uh, put up the link for Morrison's so that's great um, we have two, two, we've got Morrison's doorstep delivery number and it's both the same number. So thanks for that, ladies. Thank you. So this person came out of hospital on their own, hadn't been, lived on their own for years and years, were partially sighted, could not look after themselves, couldn't make a meal or anything. So this came in on a Friday. Most of the urgent ones tend to be on a Friday, which is quite typical. Um, however, the agent working with them managed to immediately get a short-term solution in place um, and by getting in a group of micro-providers, um, various micro-providers who could go in immediately and start helping him until a longer-term solution could be put in place. So he was safe um, all over the weekend and didn't have to be readmitted to hospital because there was no way for him to live at home safely. So an, another great case study there. What fabulous work we are all doing. Um, Fiona Gaffer from Wellington said she was looking. Oh, I've lost you now, Fiona. She was looking for some referrals for some free frozen cooked food. Um, they are you. They are a micro provider and have a freezer full of home cooked meals, which they can deliver free. Ah, oh, right. Okay. So they found a micro provider who has a freezer full of home cooked meals, um, which they can deliver free of charge or they're looking for them, I'm not sure. I think they might be looking for them, actually. Um, okay, so we did do a big group drop of um, ready meals last week. We supplied a 1,000 in the Taunton Dean area. Um, I think there were some other areas as well, but we ourselves in Taunton Dean were very much involved, and I personally delivered 70 of those meals. They looked delicious. I had the cottage pies deliveries, uh, everyone was thrilled to get them, um, very excited um, and it's just nice to be able to, to do this for people. Um, it's not it's not a long term solution, it was a treat um, for those people to get some fresh, they were fresh chilled foods which was delicious for them not to keep having frozen meals and tinned, so that's good. So, um, okay. 
think that's getting some messages in. Getting all sorts of messages in. So yeah, Morrison's, they've been great. I also know uh, Aldi are doing some food boxes. Uh, I think it's £25 and you have to um, order online on, on their uh, link that they give you. And I don't think you get a choice of what's in the boxes but I think the boxes have all your essential needs in them so that's £25 so for anyone who's having trouble getting home deliveries that is one way of getting some food into your home and I think Asda have also started to do that but I don't know um, the contact details so if anyone knows the contact details for Asda that would be great if you could let us know put it in the comments um, most most of the supermarkets are really responding now and sort of Tesco's and Asda um, and Sainsbury's are increasing their home deliveries so I know a lot of people are having trouble getting these booking slots for delivery but keep looking, keep trying, they are coming up and if you've had one of the uh, letters, NHS letters um, then you should be able, you should be on their vulnerable list and you should get priority booking but you will have to put in your NHS number and it will have to match the list that they've got. But that's worth doing. Um, but it, it's really working. Are the links up there for the Aldi food parcel? So take a look on that, uh, let people know. Um, it's always great. T apparently Tesco's have cut their fresh produce waste by 20% as they're donating all of the produ produce that's possible to use past that's used past the use by date so hopefully they are um, donating it to um, the food bank which have been amazing they have made so many uh, deliveries for clients of ours that we've asked them to they never say no they're always there and they always willing to go that extra mile you know if it's a, a last minute one they will try and add it on to their day so a big thank you to the Trussell Food Bank covering Taunton and Wellington um, Tesco's delivered and okay so when you ring up for the Morrisons they do boxes which can be delivered um, and you ring the number in on this um, on the comments and you go to option four so that's good so uh, has anyone got any questions it's lovely speaking to everybody I don't see any questions coming up. Don't forget, if you've got a, a question or there's someone you are concerned about, you can um, go on to the private message or you can go on to the COVID response form um, where the link will, uh, it, it is in the comments, but it's on, it's on our website, um, Somerset Agents and CCS Love Somerset. So that's good. Okay, I have another case study um, here. Um, it's about a person um, in their 80s, living alone, doesn't want to ask for help because she feels there's others more worthy, there's people that need more, more help than herself. Um, but then she receives a letter that's gone out. It's gone out to everybody on the uh, vulnerable list uh, that we don't have a that we aren't able to call um, so it, they posted a letter to them all and in it it says if you want any support please call us well she called in thankfully and we were able the agent was able to get her support um, she's been put in touch with a gas engineer and an electrician um, for her immediate job and she's just been in touch with all of the local connections, um, volunteers and phone calls and things. And she's over the moon, which is lovely to hear. And she's over the moon with all the help and friendliness she has received. And she's very grateful. So well done. Great. So I think, OK, what does this say? Uh, oh, this is um, when you get a referral. Have you already got client consent? How do you take over social worker when you get there? Okay, I'm not sure. Is that a question for me or is that a question for Fiona? So when when I get a referral, uh, Chris, adult 
social care, um, I've already got client consent from the social worker to work with them. Um, the social worker will always get that consent first. So um, I hope that's answered your question, Chrissy. Um, I know with a lot of um, the referrals coming in on the COVID response, we do have to get the client's um, permission to pass on their contact details to the volunteers if we need to contact a volunteer. Um, so that we always make sure that we do have the client's um, permission. If we don't have their permission to uh, store their contact details to pass on to various agencies, we can't help them. So it is important that they do give that permission. Um, Okay, that's brilliant. So thank you all for that. Um, I don't know if there's much else. What, anything else in the comments? Okay, um, many thanks to Tim Potter, the butcher in Wellington, who is working with local residents and the well Wellington Volunteer Group to deliver free meat, fruit and veg boxes to residents who would benefit from these. So what a fabulous thing to do, Tim. Tim Potter, the butcher in Wellington, congratulations. That is fabulous, well done. There's so many, so many kind uh, kind acts that are being done all over the whole of Somerset, and I'm sure over the whole of the country, but we're extremely proud of all of those in the Taunton Dean area, and a big thank you to them. But that is a wonderful thing to do, Tim. I wish I lived in Wellington. Okay. So there's the link for Asda boxes in there. So there's lots of information that you can pass on to people. I'll also put in all of the um, uh, links to activities for people that, to keep them occupied during this week, Mental Health Awareness Week. I'd love to see um, some photos of your camping in the garden on Monday night. Um, that'd be great to get some feedback from that um, and all of your uh, ideas to do things to do around the campfire. Um, please be uh, aware of um, fire risks. We don't want to get the um, get into trouble with the fire service. Okay, yeah, uh, Carolyn is also thanking. Uh, we got a. Uh, can I do a shout out and a thanks to all Taunton Dean coordinators and volunteers? Yeah, I did do that earlier, Lucy, but I totally agree. Um, all of the coronavirus community support groups that have sprung up in every region around Taunton Dean. They are doing such a fabulous job. Um, we are so grateful for their help um, and couldn't do it without them. So thank you, big thank you to them and their coordinators. Um, I can't remember all their names, so I won't start because I might offend someone by not remembering their name. Um, but thank you and you know who you are. So thank you very much. Um, I know Ed Cullen is doing an awful lot. Um, he's doing um, hot meals, Sunday roasts, um, and there is a small charge for these for most people, but he's also doing quite a lot of them free, which have been kindly donated, I think, through the Taunton Rotary Club, I think, have financed that, um, which you can find details of that on Facebook um, if you put in Ed Cullen. Um, so that's brilliant. So I think that's pretty much all today, uh, unless there's any last minute um, questions, I'm going to finish off soon and the next Talk and Cafe will be tomorrow at 11 o'clock and as I say, who did I say it was? Uh, I believe it's Mendy, isn't it? Find my bit of paper with it on, probably can't remember. Oh, oh, oh. Yes, it's Mendy and it's Kizzy Marshall. Um, and Kizzy has got some really great um, ideas for you, so that's great. Um, yeah, sorry about that. The Devon and Somerset Fire Service have said, please avoid having fires in your garden as they are attending a high number at the moment. So enjoy your camping safely, but perhaps um, let's not have any fires in the garden unless you've got a nice safe fire pit or something like that. So thank you all very much. Um, I hope you have enjoyed uh, watching me um, and I hope it's been useful oh thank you Fiona thank you very much she says it's been useful so let's hope so um, and you can still uh, find all the comments uh, we'll still be here if you want to look back at a link um, and so that will be it so thank you very much oh Marilyn Dodd 
wants to know wants to know uh, who gets these i think are you talking about marilyn are you talking about the um the butcher's boxes um i'm not sure perhaps you'd need to contact tim um the butcher in wellington unless he is on here and he can answer himself or someone would know so i think marilyn um your questions on there so um the agent in your area will be able to get back to you if we can't get an answer for you so i'm going to sign off now lovely to to speak to you all hope you found it interesting and informative and uh i'll see you all soon stay safe <laughs>